and okay everyone um welcome back to the second session of working group phoenix if you remember from last time the agents a pair of fbi agents and a specialist were contacted early on a sunday morning because a body had been found in savannah georgia they are currently located in atlanta uh, the body had been dismembered, um, disemboweled partially, and decapitated. And it appeared that there were some similar cases had appeared up and down the East Coast over the past two years. Or at least cases where a body was found washed ashore, missing one or more limbs. So the agents go in to investigate. They go to the morgue. Well, they talk, first they talk to the detective, sheriff's deputy in charge, who doesn't seem to be taking the case that seriously. The deceased was a college student. He feels that she was just trapped in a drug deal that went bad and just got killed. So he's not too concerned about it. They go to the coroner's office, and there they find that she has been dismembered with surgical precision. Very precise cuts. Someone knew what they were doing. The body had been drained of blood before it had been dismembered. And she had eaten shortly before death because there was still food in her stomach. That was sent to a lab for analysis. Um, and she was also dead before being put in the water. There was no water in her lungs. There had been a similar case also in Savannah about six months previous, which was put down as a stowaway on a boat who tried to swim ashore and got caught in the shipping channel. They talked to the coroner who performed that and said he thought that was wrong. That case also had food in its stomach, uh, clean cut limbs, that sort of thing. But a member of the county council wanted to hush it up and just write it off because they didn't want to steer scarce tourists away from what is a major tourist city. So that was kind of covered up. They find out from the deceased student's roommate that she had um, recently been dating someone new named Ash. That's the only name they have. She is a member of something known as the Savannah Epicurial Society, which is a uh, dinner club for the rich, basically. And she has a office, well not an office, a workshop at the Savannah Artist Co-op, which is downtown. They have her cell phone. The cell phone had been factory wiped or factory reset so they can't get anything immediately off of it so they have put in a request for that to be an analyzed. They have stopped for lunch at a place called the Partridge Barn where which is a approved restaurant for the Savannah Epicurial Society and they find out that it did have a dinner here about the night that the person the uh, Jane Doe from October was here. Um, one of the waitress, wait staff went home with one of the members of society. He took her to a yacht, or a dock at the marina, where a yacht known as Rodan's Thought was parked. And someone there yelled at him for bringing someone, and he just sent her back home. So this is the information they have so far. And if I missed something, will somebody please fill me in? The art collective that you've already marked on there. I think you got everything. Uh, if not, there's the uh, the Google Doc that I've posted in the chat on Discord, uh, which I also, if you'll forgive me, uh, has a few of like what I thought were our good leads to follow up on for this session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent write up, I have to say. Okay. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce Sharon Liu. Uh, Sharon, why don't you introduce yourself? Well, um, character is Sharon Liu. She is 
Uh, basically, uh, she's a hacker. Uh, she has computer skills. She, uh, you know, she got, uh, um, and I just put her out earlier today. She's got good stealth skills. And uh, she's, she's definitely, I think, already a couple of angles to run up and help in this rundown that she could help with investigate, uh, you know, uh, various clues that have been presented. Um, is there anything else you want to know? I mean, I figure I'm not going to tell you all my backstory because you can read and also oh, probably wouldn't be like, hey, guys, at 14, I've broken work or whatever. <laughs> That's fine. Um, um, Sharon, it is early. It is a around evening time by this point on um, Sunday evening. And you get a sudden call from your office. Um, what are you doing when you get the call? Uh, I'm sitting down. I was sitting down to eat with uh, my partner, Danielle. Okay. Do you an your are you gonna answer? Uh, yeah, it's on my encrypted phone and it's you know, the uh, whatever. Uh, his grandma for this special you know, for the office. Oh, yeah. I know it's the office, so I excuse myself and excuse me hunt the other room, I gotta take this. And then we go into the room, uh, turn on the cone of silence or whatever it is. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. And yeah, Sharon, sorry to bother you on a um, Sunday like this, but um, half the people seem to be on vacation and the other half seem to be quarantining still. Uh, look, uh, we need you to get down to Savannah, Georgia. There's a um, FBI um, team down there right now investigating what seems to be a serial killer. Uh, they have a phone belonging to them that they can't get into and the higher-ups are saying this is maybe kind of important we need to get into it so can you get down there uh, you can drive or we can get you have you a plane ticket waiting for you at the airport whichever way you want to go uh, I'll just get a car it's gonna be gonna be quicker and it'll be and I don't want to get up with a bunch of a carrier basically okay that's cool uh, Sorry, it's, are, we doing, are we doing COVID I did um, the way I'm basically doing it is, yes, COVID was a thing that existed and basically everybody's ignoring it now, which is painfully close to okay, reality, all right. so. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so it'll be about two or three hours before you get there, before you get there. Uh, for the rest of you, you're on your way back to your hotel from the, um, leaving the restaurant you'll be contacted by um, your handler who will tell tell you that um, there is an NSA specialist coming down to meet with y'all and that she should be able to get into that telephone for you. Hey, that's what we were missing. <laughs> he says, yeah, I don't know what y'all have found down there, but, you know, this has suddenly gotten some higher up attention. People are prioritizing this. Well, uh, you got the message that uh, this is definitely linked, right? I mean, I can't remember. I did. I think last session I said that I, we would definitely have fed back that. Um, yes, I am. They are linked. Yeah. Just in case it com becomes important, um, I am assuming you are relaying information back, unless you specifically tell me you are keeping it secret. Well, yeah, I think that's about right. Yeah. Okay, so y'all are at the hotel room, and you're waiting on Sarah to come down, or Sharon. Sarah's the victim. Um, need to, very important to keep those two distinct. Um, so, what do y'all think your next move should be or could possibly be? We, I mean, we need to discuss this. Um, I think. Um, our priority should probably be the food club and 
I was thinking if it is possible to maybe get an undercover person inside of the club, pay the fee, um, pretend that you're interested in food, and try to find out what's going on in there. I don't think... Um, that you're interested it's... in food, Jefferson? Uh, <laughs> I think your wife would have said that you love food a bit too much, huh? <laughs> Um, I, I, I wouldn't mind. I'm, I'm interested in food. No, I, but the other... I agree that the uh, Epicurean side is good, but my feel is we need to go to the art co-op. Uh, Calvin's the ex-boyfriend, Jackie, they both knew this Ash character. Uh, so I, And, you know, people are the best leads in any of these investigations, so my vote's for the art co-op. I'm not, I'm not on board with this whole cannibal cult shit that you and... Uh, you and Jackie oh, seem to have it, cooked up. People are never the working. I, where, 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 how? You've been an agent for this long, and you, you look, look at all the information we got from the body. Well, the best In way is case. because the people's uh, stories, when they don't add up, that's how you know something's going on, Jackie. I know that speaking to people ain't your forte, based on what I've seen, but. <laughs> Listen, you can divide and you can take all this stuff on at once. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Con I don't have much contact with the Bureau. Maybe I should try to join up the club in case they try to do background checks. Yeah, that is a problem indeed. That's not a bad idea. Um, another, th a another thought. So, let's say... Um, the working theory that we have, which is, I completely agree, it's very far out. Um, it could potentially connect all the victims, not the ones here, but uh, the other ones that have been recorded. So if we find out, so, so for example, what we should do is check if the society has chapters in other cities and if these chapters match with where the bodies uh, have been found. Or we're talking about rich people. You wanna, you wanna travel. You wanna hunt down the Epicurean Society, right? <laughs> you you two wanna go down for the Epicurean Society route, okay? I'm gonna I go. Have... I I think we should go to the art cop so I can handle that. And we got uh, Sharon coming down, uh, Miss Lou coming down to take care of the phone. Uh, yes. That just leaves that just leaves the ship hanging. Uh, and also, I'm thinking that. It's going to be quite late this evening, right? By the time uh, Sharon comes up, comes gets down to us, right? Because we set off at like early morning. Yeah, it'll probably about be about nine p.m. when she gets here. At this point, I'm assuming y'all yeah. actually had dinner, not lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're we're talking the evening, right? And I, I think the evening might be an okay time to catch people at the art co-op, perhaps just before they leave. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about like. Um, you know, like businesses, like the Epicurean Society, or the sh I, I don't, and the ship, and that kind of stuff. But I feel like we can dig in on the ship for, we also this need evening. To down you know, that yacht. yeah, the Rodin's uh, thoughts. So, yeah, which, yeah, which I have spelled like the um, the Godzilla monster because I'm not that educated. <laughs> <laughs> you should see what I said in the Discord. Oh, I saw, I saw, yeah. <laughs> um, so, given that it's evening. Do you think, I mean, we're what, like five o'clock, six o'clock, Dennis? What would you say? I'm assuming it's around six right now. Okay, so the art co-op's probably better to take on in the morning, really, than that, than anything else, you know, like during the day. Uh, are, are you kidding? You know, artists, they don't sleep. They sleep during the day. I guess, actually, I think I'm just mis... I think I am just thinking of the art co-op as like... Uh, an office kind of thing, as opposed to, you know, they own the they they run the building and they can all hang out there as long as they want, sort of thing. That is a good uh, question. What are we looking at here with that art co-op? Are you gonna you want to do a look up? Oh, I'll, I'll go look at that. Yeah, for I sure. I mean, you could you could just look it up online if you want. I mean, it's not. Yeah, I, I think by this point we probably all have our laptops out and check on uh, Rodin's thoughts and openings time opening times of the art club. And, you know, uh, Greg will uh, specifically look for um, the Epicurean Society and whether they have um, other 
factors in other parts of the country. Yeah. Because, I mean, at this point, it's all on the eastern seaboard. There is absolutely nothing that we have heard that would lead us to believe they are not going up and down the coast. I mean, that would scatter corpses around. They wouldn't have locals involved. They'd be moving on from place to place, so it'd be harder to track them down. I think we've got plenty of theories, guys. I think that we, you know, this cannibal cult that's spreading up and down the East Coast. I'm all there with you. We just need to get the evidence to fit the case, right? Now, the rodents mm -hmm. thought, I ain't much of a seafaring person, but uh, is there any kind of, like, log or something? I guess they're individual harbors rather than any kind of national system, huh? Yeah, there, I don't think there'd be a harbor master's log of you know, who comes and who goes and who's docked and who isn't. Most you could find is we could probably track something down based on who pays the fees for the slip. Well, we can but... definitely... The boat's going to be registered to somebody, right? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So we can... Oh, that's our first point. We find out who the boat the boat's registered to and then maybe we can you know that'll open up uh, fees etc if we can see if they've got credit card payments or whatever in each location that we're interested in but first point of it first actionable piece of intel is the owner of the boat uh does he is the art the art co-op what sort of general vibe do we get from that from the the website okay the vibe you get from the uh, website is that Savannah's Artist Co-op is designed to provide both workshop space and um, gallery space for artists of the Savannah area. Um, they want art to be available to everyone, not just the wealthy who can afford it. So any artist, they work very closely with the college, can come in, request space, and they have areas for whatever they need to do. They support everything from painters and photographers, graphics designers, um, sculptors. Um, they also, it also has a coffee shop and they have an agreement with the Rising Tide Brewery, which is a local microbrewery. So it gets a lot of foot traffic. Do they have like opening hours for the, um, the center itself? It's going to close in about an hour on Sunday. It's open later during the week. Remember, then this is a Sunday. Yeah. The micro see if I can catch someone. Okay. Yeah. The microbrewery has like a you can like drink beer there as well. Oh yeah. It's like a oh, okay. They allow that in Georgia we now. Where all we where all the artists hang out, uh, you know, after they finished doing their arts and crafts. So Jean is checking the uh, art center. Sorry, are you guys talking? Talking, Gabe. Can you not hear us? Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm having it like where, like, like where I get silent and then all of a sudden mid-sentence again. It's weird. Well, that's probably just on. Let me do. I'll troubleshoot. So, I mean, if you want, I can set up a stream of your room and have it up in inside thirty seconds, and it shouldn't present any audio problems for any of us. You, you know what? I'll. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna get phone without my wife, and I'll be able to do everything. Fine. Okay. I'll be back. <clears throat> uh, yes, can we? Um... Uh, use the um, use the bureau to get uh, information about the rodents thought. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, do a bureaucracy to see how fast you can get it. Uh, wow, right on it, it looks like. Nice. Sure, they, they say they can get that to you pretty quickly. I'll wait on the answer in the uh, hotel room. Okay, so you're not heading down to the um, 
co-op? Yeah, I don't know. Um, somebody should wait for um, Sharon anyways. You guys want to head out? Jean looks at Jackie uh, and says, sure, as long as Jackie remembers not tell people what we're investigating until <laughs> we've, you know, established that they ain't a suspect. I mean... <laughs> I, I, I like the idea of it just being the side, if you're okay with that. <laughs> as we leave the, the room. <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, we'll go. Uh, we'll leave uh, Jefferson to continue to dig into things and wait for uh, Sharon to arrive. Okay. So, well, that's happening. The two of y'all go down to the co-op. The gallery portion of it is closing as you get there but there's a surprising number of people hanging around in the coffee shop um, you know microbrewery side of things um, some number of tourists obviously a lot of young people uh, y'all may be a slightly out of place here but um, so you go in grab a table stop at the bar Coffee, beer, which side? Yeah. I'm ordering the beers. Uh, Jackie, what are you having? Ah, Francis Connor. Orange slice with it. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'll take a Pabst Blue Ribbon, please. <laughs> uh, Oh, we well, only we gotta have, try the, we, we only yeah, have we our beer here. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, we'll take two IPAs, please. Uh, okay, sure. And I was wondering, you know, uh, you know, Calvin. Calvin, um, as he frantically looks through his notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Calvin Christensen. Yeah, he's um, he's one of the graphic designers here. Um, don't know if he's in tonight. How about, uh, well, Jackie, you know her? And, uh, I'm, uh, Jackie, Ash, and Calvin, the three people I've been trying to meet. You know Ash? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you hang what out with... Ash? Ash. Ashlyn. Ashlyn Dunwood. He, he's the sponsor of this place. What, the whole brewery or the co-op? The co-op, yeah. He's a big artist, big, big fan of art. He's done so much since he came here. Huh. Do you know, uh, you have a... See the one that's going out with, uh, with, uh, what's she called, uh... Sarah? Was it? Um, yeah. He and Sarah have gotten really friendly. I actually haven't seen her in a couple of days now. Maybe she's hanging out with him and not with us anymore. <laughs> he ain't in tonight, is he? Oh, no, he doesn't hang... No, not tonight. Sorry, I had my mic off. No, not tonight. Um, he's got his workshop on the third floor, but I haven't seen him in a couple of days. Okay, so you ain't uh, you ain't seen Calvin or Jack or Ash tonight. Uh, that's a shame. We we'll have to catch him tomorrow, I guess. Oh, Jackie's over there. Oh, oh well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, she was just cleaning up her. She was cleaning out her area. I think she was cleaning her brushes off. She should be out soon. Thanks. Uh, and I, you know, nod at uh, my Jackie, <laughs> Miss Taylor. Uh, and uh, I suggest, though, that we go and sit down, sip our beer, and then try and just catch Jackie in a studio rather than out here in the bar. Does that sound good to you, gonna, Bucket? I'm going to slide that beer a little bit farther away from me because, well, you know, I am in recovery. Uh, yeah, and, true, and you actually, can yeah. and you confuse me with two Jackies. It's Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, I apologize. I have uh, I have done the thing where I was rapidly typing out the leads last night, and I've got the wrong name in the wrong place. So Vicky, apologies. Calvin Diaz and Vicky Watkins. Calvin Diaz, and Vicky Watkins. Thank you. 
the problem when you uh, write the wrong thing down in your notes. <laughs> it's worse than not writing it down at all. No, that's fine. Just like I said, I knew there was a Jackie in the game, so I was just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. As we, said, as we were doing it, I was like, why didn't I notice the same names last time? That seems like something I would have noticed, but oh well, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't think that, that Gene knows that you're an alcoholic, that you've had, like, recovery, right? Or are you open it, about I it? I mean, I don't advertise it. It's not like you know, there's a billboard upside outside the bureau office or anything. But I, yeah, despite my uh, very high humid, I will still make a joke about how much that beer cost and that we're just leaving it behind. Jefferson remembered uh, that Jackie told about it enough that he would send a text to Gene to make sure that uh, Jackie uh, doesn't. Too much. Shit faced. Well, yeah, you did send that text, yeah. <laughs> and I think Gene looked at it and just was like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> good joke, Jefferson. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so should we. You, um... Did I do a good job of, like, not tipping the hand about. Yeah. Suspects? Yeah. You, you see how I didn't immediately go over there and flash my FBI badge and, you know, try and spill all the details that we know to the people that don't know anything? I'm just I just like to shake trees and see what falls out. And I do too. I just don't want to do it with a chainsaw. Why? Uh, Everything falls out. Yeah, on top of you. Uh, well, it's easier to pick it up then. <laughs> all right, Jackie. All right. Come on, let's uh, go into. Let's go and see if we can find Vicky in there. Better to take her some. Better to speak to her somewhere private rather than rather than uh, out here. Okay, right now she's up on the second floor where the um, studio space is. Oh yeah, I definitely which, want to head which up is, there. Well, that's off limits to people who aren't members of the co-op. Yeah, but when you say off limits, do you mean like there's a security door, or do you mean that like I'm not supposed to be there? There's a sign that says co-op members only. Oh well, if there's a sign, I mean, oof. Does the sign say <laughs> anything on the other side? Well, it's attached to the wall. I think we should I think we should go through the door and see if the sign's repeated on the other side and what does it say, and then maybe go all the way up to the second floor. It's it's a stairway, not a door. Oh, I, I, I know. We're just being we're just being uh, smart, Alex. Sorry, <laughs> Dennis. Yeah. Okay. We, we want to go up to the studio. Okay. Um, give me a <laughs> somebody make mind. somebody make a die roll and don't fumble. Just roll percentile own. Uh, let's call it um, stealth. Just don't fumble. <laughs> okay. Um, if you've got your thing open, puck it. Would you like to do that? Because I've just accidentally closed roll twenty. Um, just click stealth on the character sheet. You've got the character sheet. Yeah, I don't actually have. He doesn't. He's, he's only, only using um. Uh, the character. You want me to roll it? Yeah, go for it. Let's see. Was okay. It a fumble? Nope, 63, like I said. It's not doubles, so it's not a fumble. So y'all go upstairs. Nobody's really paying attention. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I figured, right? Like, <laughs> employees only is usually a sign that's only of importance if you bump into an employee on the other side. Uh, right. You get up to the second floor. The stairs going up to the third. And there's the door off the stairway here. Um, leads into a it looks like this was like a warehouse that they've converted into a multi-floor building there aren't individual rooms in here basically there are like um, chest high stalls all around that have different things in them I mean some of them have um, you know artist setups um, sculptures there's um, metal working gear in here, there's stone working gear in here, there's wood working gear in here, there's all kinds of tools and that sort of stuff just around the edges of the room. There is a bank of computers on one end. Um, you get the idea. It just makes like a big artist work area. And there's two or three people wandering around in here. More than one woman? Pardon? Is there more than one woman? Uh, no, two of them are women. Okay, so yeah. Um, 
Well, I just go over to the closest one and I ask, uh, you know, hi, Vicky. Uh, give Vicky, me a 50 50 uh, shot. <laughs> Vicky Watkinson? Is give me a 50 50 shot. Or here, just say odd or even. Uh, give me an odd or even. Sorry, I was waiting to hit my mic button. With, um, even. Should I roll? Ah, you rolled. Nice. Okay. Wait. And, um, the woman goes, uh, yeah? Uh, who are you? <laughs> the woman goes, yeah? Um, who are you? It's, uh, uh, Jean. Um, I'm a friend of uh, Sarah's roommate. Oh, yeah. How's she doing? I yeah, haven't seen good. I haven't seen Sarah in a couple of days. What's she been up to? Oh, when was the last time you saw her? Oh, geez, about um. I guess it's been about a week ago now. Uh, she was here staying late till Ash came down from upstairs, and they headed off somewhere. I haven't seen her since. Character is that? Does that line up roughly with like the night that she went missing? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, I reel off the date to confirm. Was that the night of whatever? Right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Why? You can uh, tell she's a little confused. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I'm looking for Sarah too. I I haven't seen her either. Uh, I'm trying to get hold of Ash, but no one's got his number. Just call his office. Oh, do you have that number? Uh, Dunwood Engineering? It's in the paper. It's in the um, phone book. You should be able to look it up. Oh, of course. Uh, you you seen him since since then? Because uh, the roommate, her roommate ain't seen, ain't seen him either, and she's been trying to get in touch. Uh, Carla knows Ash, too? I didn't. I didn't think. Um, Sarah oh no, didn't... she's just worried about Sarah, you know. I mean, she's oh, been she hasn't seen Sarah touch. either. No. That's weird. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, uh, have you seen Ash since that night? Yeah, he w he came in for. A, he was here for a couple of days, but the um, electric furnace we use for casting, for metal casting, it broke, and he was doing another one of his little um, plaques, and it didn't work. And so he's been kind of angry, and he hasn't come in since. He's a furnace for this thing, an electric casting, you say? That's Ash. Is that Ash's thing? Like, uh, oh, I, no. I'm not much of an artist, you know? She points to the far end of the room. No, it's down there. It's one of the pieces of equipment he provided. It's an electric furnace. It lets us do smelting. He uses it for bronze casting. Right. Hmm. Uh, Vicky, is there a place we can go uh, to speak privately? Uh, you'll need to make a persuade or something like that. <laughs> For her uh, to... Yeah. Yeah, persuade, uh... It feels as though I've done the enough of the softly, softly, you know. But, uh, now it's time for... I'm actually a member of the FBI, and I'm investigating, uh, Sarah's thing. Uh, tell me where the hell everything is. But let's see if I can do that without the badge. <laughs> okay. I have 70 in Persuade, so I should be good enough with that. Wait, yes. 35. She goes, Oh, um, why is Sarah in trouble? Has, has something happened? Uh, well, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I think it'd just be really useful if we could talk, uh, you know. Do you have a, is there like an office or something we can use? Yeah, we've got some um, booths down there for people to go into so they can use the phone and that sort of thing. It gets loud sometimes in here. Hmm. So uh, I, I want to take her off to the office and, like, you know, do the sort of informal interrogation kind of stuff, you know? Sure. Uh, like, openly. I'm wondering, Pucket, is there anything you want to do? Like, check out the furnace, uh <laughs> route around his Ash Ashton Lynn's off Dunwood's office or whatever while I uh, distract the key? 
Wojcik. Um, I would absolutely. My thought was that I want to see what the, what's going on with that third floor. You mentioned the third floor, and I mean, even before I knew it was Ash's office or it, that it was up there, it's like I want to know what's on that third floor. Okay. So, um, Jackie's going up to the third floor, and Jean is going to um, talk with Vicky. You got that right? In fact, perhaps if she can even lead me over to the, f the furnace room, right? It's not in use at the moment. Yeah, it sits, it's sitting semi out in the open. Yeah, she can show it to you. Yeah, she shows me the furnace first. Uh, you know, just retcon it to be like I did that. Okay. We speak privately after, you know. Just okay. Like um, the side panel is off of it, and it looks like somebody's been working on it, but um, it's it's obviously not in functional state at the moment. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look big enough to um, put, say, human limbs and things inside. Uh yes, you probably could. Okay. Interesting. Uh. I make a note of that. Um, yeah, and then I'll go speak with Vicky, and then we go into uh, you know one of these uh, private work, like the little workshop or whatever that she's taken us into. Well, um, it, it's just like a little tiny five by five foot room with a glass door in the front that they would basically you would go in and close the door so it'd be quiet enough to carry a phone conversation in. Yes, yeah. Well, I make sure that I'm standing by the door rather than you know she's on the inside of the room and I'm stood by the door kind of thing. Uh, okay. And uh, I say, well, uh, well, uh, Miss Watkinson, I got. I apologize for uh, not being wholly honest with you. My name is uh, Agent Oliver with the Atlanta FBI branch of the FBI. Uh, oh, what's this about Sarah? Is is something happened? Uh, I. I need to ask you. Do you know where Calvin was on the night of uh, that you last saw Sarah? Uh, Calvin? That was... I don't know. He's never here on f Friday nights. That's his, that's his um, League of Legends night. Well, all right. I, ho I, I hope he's doing well. Uh, now... <sighs> why... why is, is, did he do something to Sarah? I know you. I, can, I, I can't comment on any ongoing investigation. Uh, I mean, I mean, was saying? he he was he was upset when she suddenly started dating Ash, but I guess he kind of got it. I mean, you know, I thought he was over it. How long ago was this? About five, six weeks ago. Oh, okay, so not too long. Uh, but he seems over it. You say? I, I thought he was. I mean, you know. Um, you know where Calvin lives? Uh, he's down on the campus, I think. Not not on a dorm. He's in an apartment nearby. You got his phone number? She pulls out her phone and looks through it and gives you, you know, five 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 one two one two. Mm-hmm. Great, great. Um, now, uh, you know, and I, I go over, I confirm like her movements on the night of the um, the thing, right? And I, uh, I say, was that? Do you know if uh, if uh, Sarah took Ash's car or they took her car? Well, they both left at the same time. She took her car home because she was going to change. They were apparently going someplace nice for dinner. So if we think about, you know, just to establish metagame wise, if we think about the movements, Sarah mo went away from the co-op in her car, uh, and then her car was found on campus, was that right? That's correct. Yeah, away from her dorm, is that correct? Like No, it was uh, in the parking lot for her dorm. Or it in the was parking in the park, garage. So, cool, yeah, sorry. We don't... We don't quite do it the same way in the UK, so it wasn't, you know, if you if you're on campus, you tend not to have a parking space because we don't have so many cars. So I was not making that connection, but cool, that's great. We've um we've established that she was there since she left a phone and a handbag in the car there. Hmm. Um, and Ash, uh, Sarah, uh, has he spoken about Sarah since that night? Uh, no, but um, 
I don't see him that much. I mean, he comes by and sees what everyone's doing and tells us how good it is. I mean, he's very encouraging to the artist here. Um, okay. But, you know, I, I don't really know him that well. I mean, he's not really, you know... You know and he, the galleries here, is there any of uh, Sarah's work or Ash's work? Um, yeah, there's Sarah's works down there. Um, she's got her stall where she sells her stuff, but um, I don't think Ash actually has anything here. Uh, they were going to this uh, Epicurean night, right? Uh, maybe? I don't know. She okay. said they were going out. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I don't think I want to tell her any more about this. You know, I don't want to tip her hand tip the hand of anything to anybody uh, although I suppose I'm already talking about it if she speaks to Ash then yeah you know what I'm going to say uh, well I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this uh, Miss Wat Watkinson um, Sarah's body was found uh, just over 24 hours ago actually it was only about 18 but it was yeah. found about 4 in the morning yeah um she she is obviously shocked by that. She goes, what? When, 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 what? How, what? Do you think Calvin did it? I, I'll be honest, I don't <coughs> Calvin did it, but I have to treat everybody here as a suspect. Even you, Miss Watkinson, you understand? What? No, I, I, Sarah's now a friend of mine. I would never, uh, I would never uh, do it. I have not, you have yet to meet a murderer who wouldn't have said they'd never do it before they did it. You understand? But I don't think you did it. What? I just need you to... You got some sort of alibi for that time. It would really... I, I'll take your word, I promise. But I'm just the, saying the, it really helps things if you can prove that you were where you say you were. Uh, th this morning, I was... Okay, I, I, I was I was at my apartment this morning. I mean... Uh, I mean, Eugene was there. I, I, I don't mean this morning. I mean on the night... The last night that we saw Sarah. That anybody saw Sarah. Uh, the second, I th think, last Friday. Last Friday, huh? Uh, yeah, I, that, that's the last time I saw her, and um, I, I, I went. I went home. Eugene came by. He's he's one of the. Um, he's one of the. He's studying beer making, and he's works at the brewery. And we went out. We went down to. Um, we went down to the Savannah Cafe, and we had um, we we were there for a while. Then we went we went back. To, okay, we went to his place for a while. But um, yeah, I mean, you you can you can ask him. I was with him all night. Like I say, I'm just saying. You know, we just need to eliminate people from our investigation. Uh, that's what I all I intend to do with Ash and uh, and Calvin. Now, if you see either of them. You please give them my card. And tell them to get in touch immediately. Oh, of course, of course. And yeah. Please, I know it'll be hard, but please do not tell them what this is about. You understand? Uh, okay, sure. All right. I mean, uh, and but, I, I, yeah. But but does Carla know? Does have you? You said you know Carla. Yeah. Well, I do know Carla. Yeah. And she knows. Uh, and Jean just looks at this woman like, "Okay, clearly artists aren't the brightest uh, <laughs> in the bunch." Uh, and says, "Yes, honey, she knows. Bless your heart." Okay, okay. Well, she's also really distraught and having trouble oh, processing this. I, I know, this. I know, I know. Um, I, uh, I, I say, uh, I think maybe, you know, take a moment, maybe go home. Maybe ring this Eugene of yours, huh? Uh, he he's probably downstairs. We we always do a lot of business on weekends, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go find him. Uh, you know, in fact, I will go down to Eugene and ask him where he thinks. Uh, you know, she takes a moment. I'll tell him that, tell him to come up and check with her, check in on her. You know, I say you do take a moment here. I'll go check. I'll go get Eugene, and when I go down to see Eugene, I'll get him to corroborate her story. Uh, and in the meantime, while I'm doing all of this, let's see what Pocket was perhaps up to on the third floor before I, uh, you know, 
spoil whatever breaking and entering shenanigans he might be getting into. Okay, Puckett, you get up to the third floor, mm -hmm. and the stairway does continue up to a f presumably the roof, but there is a um, door here, and the door, this one's not open like the previous two floors. This one actually has a door, and it's locked. Well, let's see what I can do about that. Um, door is locked. Is it reasonable to pop it open with a credit card? Uh, do you have um, craft locksmithing? do not. Okay, so um, you have a very low chance of getting in. Does it look like I can kick the door down? You probably can, but it would definitely make noise and attract attention from downstairs. Remember, the two previous floors have no door on the stairwell. Yeah, I think oh, I'm going to walk card. back down and just kind of poke my head around the corner and say, uh, Jeannie? Yeah, I think you bump into me as I'm leaving the, uh, the room, you know? Like, you've been looking around for me and you bump into me, like, as I'm going down to speak to Eugene, right? Uh, was it a key card or was it a, a normal lock? It was a normal lock. Oh, shit. Um. I don't have yeah. any lock picks. I mean, I could kick it open, but that's going to make noise and it's going to... Yeah, well, we're going to need a warrant to get into anywhere like this uh, without the permission of the people here. Let me go talk to Jackie. Uh, see if uh, she's got a... If, to Vicky, Vicky, sorry. Uh, yeah, I do. I'm sorry. The key, the key names, I can't keep them straight. Um, um, I, w I will point out that even though she's not here yet, Sharon has... is trained. Yeah. Oh, yes, I, I know. I think that was a... Yeah, I was just thinking that <laughs> it would be useful to have. But uh, in the meantime, I'll go back. I'll, I assume Eugene corroborates the story, right? Just to cross that off and be whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, he. Uh, if, if you tell him what's going on, he will be as shocked as well, not as shocked as Vicky, because he didn't really know um, Sarah that well, except as a friend of Vicky's. But he'll be really shocked about it. And can't believe something like this would have happened. Independently confirms the story that she already told me about the her movements and things, just to eliminate her entirely as a suspect. Right. Uh, uh, you can um, make a human if you want. Well, I would I need to make a human because all I do is I ask him what he was doing on that night. Okay. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, with a human, in case you want to feel better about, um, are they lying to me or covering something up or leaving something out? Human might tell you that. Okay. They aren't, but um, just, you know, you know, just so that, yeah, your training tells you that they are both telling you the truth and are both seem to be genuinely upset about what's happened. I'm just trying to metagame the, uh, <laughs> you know, like in real life, kind of, uh, if you want to tell someone's lying, ask someone who's involved in the lie what they, what their story is. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, and, you know, as uh, Vicky, uh, I tell him all about her. I say I'll go up and get Vicky. She's quite shocked and everything. I think you should take her home. Uh, I'll go up to Vicky and I'll just say, uh, "Hey, do you have a, the key for the third floor, Vicky?" What? No, that yeah. that's that's Ash's office. You know, his studio. Okay, well, uh, it's just Ash's studio, huh? Yeah. Okay. I mean, could you just the... could you just point me to Sarah's stuff and then uh, I'll let you get out. I'll let you, you know deal with this in your own time. I'm so sorry to break it to you this way. Uh, yeah. Uh, she'll show you where um, Sarah had been working. It's a lot of um, glass blowing equipment. Okay. Um, anything of any significance there? Or a shop? Or uh, you can make a search or a forensics if you like. I'm not very good at forensics. I'm better at search. Um, hey, Jackie, what's your search? Oh, my search is at 60, I think, something like that. I help Jackie search. 
so Jackie can take a 20% boost to their search, if that's okay. Uh, okay. All right. six with the 20% boost that gets me there okay um you don't s most of what she seems to be doing is basically blown glass flowers basically imagine blowing a glass bottle and then opening it up and peeling it back uh yeah it's uh, there's a lot of botanical art that's done like that it's yeah quite beautiful and it's really delicate stuff and this is this is this is good yeah she she was good uh the one thing that seems out of place is that there is a um, stained, what well, looks like she was making some stained glass, but there's not enough of it to, um, she just has the pieces, and it doesn't look like it's complete yet. But, you know, it's just sits out of place. Is there any kind of framing or is there any kind of molding to give us an idea of what might have been in the stained glass piece or is it just uh, hard to tell? no it's hard to tell at this point it looks like she was cutting out glass pieces of colored glass that she was planning to do something with but you can't tell what they are and there's not enough to reassemble it but she okay. was doing something out of the ordinary or so out of the ordinary for her anyway So what time is it about now? Like, are we talking 7, 8 o'clock? Uh, probably around 8 o'clock by now. You said a genie. Okay, so we don't have a key for that third floor, right? All right, and what we've got. I don't know about you, but I want to see that third floor. See that third floor? My, I want you know, we, we <laughs> you're in... You want to you want to try and break into there on your own? I may have to arrest you for it. You understand? Well, uh, I have a slightly different idea. Um, yeah. A little unorthodox, but it's one of those things that it's probably better if you don't know too much. Because you know, I'm not I'm not an FBI agent. So, and I know some of the laws. I mean, for example, if a door happens to be open when you find it, you can proceed in. No, that's particularly in the uh, event of, a, say, an emergency. The car now, Jackie. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go out to the car and. Uh, um. Why, why don't you head back downstairs? I'll finish those beers that we have, huh? Yes, and that, that's a very good idea. And then and uh, say if like a fire alarm or something was to go off, I would, or I would hear a loud bang and a noise, uh, I would have to. I would be duty bound to investigate. Well, and uh, Jane, I respect you, so I'm not going to say anything else. But why don't you go finish those beers? And should something unusual happen, you know, I mean, follow the yelling. Yeah. Um, be careful, right, Jackie? Uh, we can always come back once we've leaned on Ash, Dunwood, you know? Uh, before we, even if he lawyers up, we can get our way into that third floor. Yeah. But we don't know but what's there right now and what would be moved from lost in the process. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll go. I go back down, uh, and I, uh, you know, I update Jefferson basically on the uh, the case, uh, and uh, yeah, I and, go uh, back downstairs. Since we already established that Jackie is a smoker, and there is, I am absolutely certain there's got to be a ton of flammable stuff on the second floor. Oh, most definitely. I'm. Uh, I'm going to start a nice little wastebasket fire in the bathroom on the second floor. Men's bathroom. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave any cigarette butts in there or anything like that that could, be, that could pop up with evidence, but it, it'll be enough that held up, it'll generate enough, you know, it's like I'm 
like tossing a roll of toilet paper in there. You know, stuff that's going to just go up really fast, make a lot of smoke, um, and trigger a smoke vector fire alarm. Okay, give me a... Um, God, I'm trying to figure out what role would you do there. Um, stealth wouldn't necessarily be correct. You need something to... Um, let, me, let me take a look here and see if I can find anything to argue for. Um, or only if it's... Because I, I think the act of setting the fire alarms off with this fire is kind of a trivial thing to do oh yeah you um, can i'm just trying to figure out you want to start a fire but you don't want to burn the whole building down either right oh, yeah. so <laughs> i want to start a tweet out <laughs> i i think craft, if we didn't craft pyromania if we didn't starting the fires are easy starting <laughs> controlled fires are not yes. um if nothing else just give me an int times five Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not seeing something, so int x5, you said? Right. Yeah. All right, well, my int is 17. So 85. Yeah. I'd be bored with that, isn't that? 75. All right, you have got a nice smoky fire burning in a fire in a um, trash can that you filled with a bunch of rags that someone had cleaned their paintbrushes off with. Oh, so they've got like acetone and stuff in them? Yeah, but they're also wet because they were using water, so they're going to be really smoky and everything, but yeah. not, um, you know, not really high flames. Gotcha. Okay. And, you know, just for sake of argument, since I've rolled under 85, you know, it's in a metal trash can. So, I mean, as far as such things go, it should be relatively... Well, yeah, you were you were deliberately trying to do that. That's, <laughs> but but so, bad things can happen when you play with fire. Of course. So I go ahead. I set that. I make sure nobody's looking at it. That I, and that especially that I don't see any security cameras. And I just hold it up to the smoke detector and wait for the smoke detector to kick in and for the automatic sprinklers to kick in and the fire alarms and so on. And when and all that happens... All of those things will happen. So I go up to that third floor, and I just kick that door down. Okay, that's a strength times... Hey, is anybody in here? We've got a fire! It's a strength times five check. Uh, down on the first floor, when the sprinklers go off, and the... Well, the sprinklers have only gone off on the second floor. But when the fire alarm goes off and everything, some people get up and leave. A lot of people just sort of get up and look around like, what's happening? A few people run up to the second floor where, when they hit the sprinklers, start going, yeah, and run on into the um, workroom to try to rescue some of their stuff, which is now getting sprinkled on. Uh, but nobody's coming up to the third floor. So you need to give me a... Twenty-one under sixty-five on the strength check. Okay, cool. You kick the door down in one open. Okay. This one has. This room has. Um, it's a single large open room as before. Um, well, mostly. At one end of it, there is actually a bed set up, and some clothes scattered around. It looks like somebody lives here sometimes. There is a small bathroom, enclosed bathroom, off on one side. The biggest part of the room is taken up by a bunch of plates of metal that have been... A lot of them are still lying around, and some of them have been welded together into all these weird, you know, angular shapes. It's very brutalistic-looking art, except in metal. Mm -hmm. There's actually a pallet mover sitting there with some metal plates stuck on it. And, um... On the other side of the room, there's a more, um, I don't want to say delicate, but not as quite as big area. I mean, you don't have welding torches and that sort of thing. It looks like somebody has molded something out of clay, and it's just sitting there on a um, table. And next to it, there is a wheelbarrow and some bags of cement. 
-hmm. There are seven um, slabs of stone of some kind. And on the edge of the table, there is a map. And I'm going to show you that right now. And is this getting revealed to us on roll 20? There we go. Yes. Do you see it? Yeah. And I am zoomed in on it. Okay. So I'm seeing the... And on this map, we, I'm seeing the red dots and the lines connecting them when applicable. Yes, you're seeing everything you see there. Okay. You know... Does it look like that? Is that map pinned up on like a wall or something? Is it on a table? Did you say it was lying on the table next to that clay um, carving? What does this clay carving look like? It looks like it's a bunch of words that are reversed. That they're carved into the clay, not that they're carved. Uh, not that these words are carved out of clay. Um, yeah, it's a flat slab of clay that has um, letters embossed in it and a rim around it. It's looks, it looks like you might have been... Um, do you have any kind of art? I have absolutely no kind of art. I'm not an artistic person. Anthropology, though. You do have anthropology. And that is true. Give me an anthropology roll. Okay. Good looking out, Will. Thank you. is uh, 64 and what's my anthropology at? Um, 60. So, would archaeology count? Um, yeah, archaeology can count. Okay. So that would then be 64 under 75. Okay. Um, it looks like something that would have been used as a casting. Like somebody was planning to cast metal in this. Okay, so that goes hand in hand with the bronze molding or the bronze casting that Vicky mentioned, as well as that electric furnace downstairs, and also probably. With, I'm just gonna start pay, taking pictures of all of this stuff with my cell phone. Okay. So, what else is there that looks even remotely interesting? That's the things you saw that look to be um, relevant. Okay. All right, then I'm just going to take a whole bunch of pictures of everything. Um, I think under the circumstances, that's probably about I can, all I can do without arousing extra suspicion. I mean, as it is, it's like, kick the door down, it's like, I can, at, least, at least I can go downstairs, it's like, yeah, there's nobody up on the third floor, I just checked, I got worried, because there was a locked door, and, you know, had to do something. But, uh, Gene, did, did you happen to run back upstairs once the fire alarm kicked in? There, you were taking pictures around the room, right? Uh, I, um... Yeah, I wasn't touching anything, I was just taking pictures of, like, yes. the castings of that brutalist sculpture. Yeah, I, um pick up a pencil or something very innocuous that's clearly been used that's extremely low value that no one would care about from ashes uh you know from office however whatever you want to call it uh dennis mm -hmm. but uh basically sure. i'm just gonna pick that up and drop it into a pocket to have uh you know effectively now we have ashes fingerprints okay cool you're not even using an evidence bag uh, I think I'm focusing on doing this very quickly. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe I wrap it in, you know, like, I don't, you know, I think we have to get out of here before anybody um, notices. Comes yeah. Into, yeah, we leave, basically. Uh, before anyone can uh, come upstairs and find that the door's been kicked open. <laughs> that works for me. Uh, there was no CCTV here, right, Dennis? Uh, you didn't notice any. 
Good, then I'm going to take that as the more than any. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, back at the um, hotel room, Gregory. Yes. The You were doing research on the Rodent's Thought. The Rodent's mm -hmm. Thought is owned by something called Dunwood Engineering and Design. Okay. A.K.A. D.E.A.D. -E um, That's ominous. No. That was actually a sheer coincidence, but um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's owned by Dunwood Engineering and Design. So you start doing. Give me a computer check. Uh, a second. Computer check coming in. Because they got oh. back, they got back with you that information, and now they want to. Um, now you get to do follow up on it. Is that like computer science? Yes. Well, that is zero percent. Can I make this roll? Oh, you're at zero? Hmm, okay. Um, you can give me a... F okay, how about giving me a forensics then? Nope. Okay, you, fi you can't find out that much about Dunwood Engineering Design. Um, however, a quick look up on the... Um, a quick look up on the web about them reveals that about 18 months ago, the um, owner of the company and his daughter, um, Osborne and Melanie Dunwood, were killed in a plane crash returning to Savannah. Um, they have um, they built do have construction up and down the coast, and that um, his younger son Ashlyn was being put in charge of the company. But that's the only thing you find. But did it say from where they came in? They were flying in from Charlotte. Interesting. So I will right, wait. Sorry. What was that? Yeah, what? How long ago did they die? Sorry? Uh, his parents? How long ago was that? 18 months. And it was his father and sister. Father and sister. Cool. Sorry to interrupt. I just uh, oh, the notes. No yeah. <clears throat> and the mother is still alive? No. Uh, the one article you find does not mention her. Mm -hmm. um, can I go to like the official dead website? Uh, yeah, you can find what you can find out about them is that they are a engineering and design company. Um, mostly focused in commercial construction and real estate. Uh, not so much construction as office buildings, that sort of thing. They build factories and that kind of thing. Uh, they have um, operations in five states, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, South and North Carolina, and are apparently quite successful. The current Acting CEO is someone named Kyle Watts. I cross check that with the. Like, I uh, make open another window for the, the official uh, Epicurean Society. Um, is there like a member list, like founding members, or like the board or something? Uh, you can find the board. Um, Kyle Watts does not own it. Um, Ashlyn Dunwood is. Uh, I'm curious whether... What's his name? The the guy from the city council. I uh, can't find his name. Mike Whitehead, is he on the board? As a matter of fact, he is. Interesting. Um, on the website of the... Uh, Peculiar society. Um, it is just for Savannah. And not part of like a bigger. No, they are they are based here. Do they have other subsidiaries? Uh, none that are mentioned. It seems to be specific to the city. Uh, just for shits and giggles, there, there's probably like a, um, a 
uh, like a tab, like a, what's it called, like a link to how to join or something. Sure, there's a membership sign up. Uh, <laughs> I sign up in the name of Gene Oliver. Okay. Uh, uh, that that was what we uh, has have um, said, isn't it, Will? That you would be interested. I think it was Jackie was the one we were putting forward. I do oh. wonder whether I might be the better one, just in terms of lying, frankly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we need somebody who is. Um... I I, I think y'all had. I think y'all had decided yeah. that you didn't want to use Jean because a lookup will show yeah. that she was yes. in the FBI, yes. but Jackie's not. That is so true. that's true. Uh, I, I don't yeah. sign up. But what are the requirements, though? Uh, anyone can sign up, and the f there are apparently two levels of how membership works. The first level anyone can sign up for, and they're almost like they're kind of like a hyper local version of Yelp. Basically, mm -hmm. people just recommend restaurants to each other. They do reviews of restaurants they've went to, or good, bad, whatever. So basically, it's just, hey, here's a good restaurant in my area. Why don't you go to it? Um, the second level, which actually cost $100 a month to join, is their um, gourmet club. And the way the Gourmet Club works is they use your monthly fee to rent out a restaurant based on the recommendations of all the other members and take the members of the Gourmet Club to it um, on a monthly basis. Every month they go to a different restaurant. Is there and, a schedule for the next meeting? Uh, yeah. The next meeting is the, are the um, Gourmet Club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be in about two weeks. Um, it is going to two or three weeks at this point. They're going to go to the west of Naples. Yeah, I think I will wait for um, Sharon to arrive because she has the, the best computer knowledge. Okay. If nobody has something to do, we'll just have Sharon show up unless somebody wants to do something before she gets here that's uh, i think it'd be good to meet to get sharon pulled into the uh the situation um okay. <laughs> okay sharon gets here and you can find the hotel where everyone is and when you go to the room you find that um gregory is there um you can introduce yourself and how are you, will you proceed? Um, so, hi Sharon. Uh, you can call me Jefferson. Anybody, everybody else calls me that as well. All right, Sharon. Nice to meet you. What's the problem? What's going on? I heard something about the phone. <clears throat> well, here's the phone. Um, we're investigating uh, the case of two. Um, at people who were um, maimed and essentially gutted. Uh, everything that you can find out that is on that phone would be uh, hugely um, helpful. Um, before you do that, though, um, can you help me with this uh, website? I'm a bit too old and stupid for that. Um, so here's a list of um, Victims. I show uh, Sharon the list of all the missing people. Mm -hmm. um, could you cross-reference that with uh, the place where at this company has, um, you know, what's it called? Factories. Well, be construction <laughs> sites. Probably, yeah, construction sites. So. so you want me to see if these people work? Any construction sites that this company did? No, like no. no. No, just if the. I could probably do that myself, but, you know. I'm more like a people person. Um, but, you know, whether the, the place where these bodies were found um, 
and the places where the construction site is is in the uh, same area. I see. Okay, no problem. So I put my rolling case over to the side. I open up the laptop, plug it in, you know, uh, get on the VPN, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then I start doing the uh, '90s movie hacker magic. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't remember. I think I think I did this with you guys in some other game, but I typed really loud and fast, so it looks like I'm, I'm doing something important. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, just roll D100 for computer science, is that correct? That'll work. NSA powers activate. Uh, uh, let's see. Exclamation 1D100? Or if you pull up your character sheet and just click on the... Oh, right, that's right, that's right, I forgot about that. And I, I forgot to remind everyone, if you made a roll and failed at it, click the little checkbox so you can upgrade at the end of the game. So essentially what we're looking at is Florida, I think, is one. Uh, what is, what is uh, R.I.? That would be Rhode Island. Yeah. Rhode Island. And all these abbreviations. Georgia, maybe? Oh, Georgia is where we are. <laughs> so I got the roll. Yes. The, they there are currently active or have been active during the time windows. Construction sites in Jacksonville, Wilmington, and Charleston. Charleston, check. Wilmington, check. Jacksonville, check. That is a coincidence if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that's uh, unusual. Uh, can I um, can I do uh, can I can I use some of my internet food to try to like, I don't know, check, well, I want to check out the, the dead uh, website and then, you know, see if I can use any of my Google food to turn up anything other than what we've already found, like a deeper dive. Sure. Give me a computer science. Okay. Since, since you're trained, you would have gotten it anyway. It's just you get more information if you succeed. Um, <coughs> yeah, here's what you got. Um, Dunwood Engineering Design has been around for some time. They're about a 50-year-old company. It was actually founded by um, uh, the grandfather of Osborne, who passed it on down to Osborne when he got older. Um, the company would have gone to Melanie, his daughter. Uh, Melanie is actually the younger sibling, not the older one. The oldest sibling is Ashlyn Dunwood. But Ashlyn was much more interested in art than he was in architecture. So they were kind of happy when Melanie decided she wanted to be an architect engineer. And basically she was going to be taking over the company and Ashlyn was fine with this. In fact, Ashlyn left shortly after graduated from the um, graduated after the um, after he graduated from the college here. He actually went to Europe and lived in Europe for some time, primarily in Spain. Um, then, like I said, about eighteen months ago, um, in September, October, twenty nineteen, the Osborne and Melanie were returning from a construction site on a company jet, and it crashed on landing at the Savannah Airport. There was a storm going on at the time. There's nothing. It, they just think it was a bad landing. Um, and therefore, Ashland became the um, owner and CEO. He came back and has done basically nothing to run the company. 
the company is still doing well. Um, some, you know, things like Bloomberg and Forbes have noted that the company is doing well in spite of him, not because of him. So he's got pretty much a hands-off thing on doing stuff. He seems to be making a name for himself as strongly supporting the local art and history scene in Savannah. Um, uh, information on his wiki page will tell you things like he founded a Savannah um, artist co-op, that he is a big supporter of the Savannah Epicurial Society, that he has been working with Savannah Historical Society to note points of um, historical interest in the city and things similar to that. His mother is apparently still alive um, but she is not really mentioned anywhere. Alright. Good to know. Um, Jefferson, is there any other stuff you, that you would like me to take a look at? Um, oh, there's, well, there's obviously the phone, uh, right. which should, should be our main uh, priority at the moment. But uh, thank All right. you. Alright, no problem. anytime you know anytime you need me uh, I, obviously I'm available whenever and then I give them uh, my uh, I give them the uh, number to my burner phone I mean you're part of the team Sharon I think you could be around for uh, the rest of the investigation is what I got well no I just mean that you know you know you were saying that you weren't particularly savvy with the <laughs> uh, that is very don't worry about hitting me up. It's fine. I'm here all the way. Uh, you know, obviously. You, you know. Well, would they have gotten my phone number already? As being a part of the mission, or no? Uh, no. They would have. Exp they would have given you the briefing that they had, but they um wouldn't have given any of your information to them yet. And Greg says. Um, I can give you my ICQ number if you want to, and he uh, winks. <laughs> she laughs. Um, uh, Sharon laughs. Like uh, you're a good sport. Um, so let me sit, let me take a look at that phone. It was a factory reset. Those aren't too hard to roll back. And then I guess I will uh, try to start hacking up the phone. Come okay. hack away. Oh, you did roll. <laughs> you get three numbers of the. You get three thirty numbers in a row, and I didn't notice at first that it. Uh, you went down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in. The, I'm in the zone right now. Yeah, you can. Uh, you're able to undo the factory reset on the phone. It had just had a factory reset, but it hadn't actually cleared anything from memory. It was obviously someone just did the, you know, go to, go to the screen and hit factory reset on it. Right. So now you get a bunch of phone numbers, um, pictures, um, usual stuff. Now you get to start um, digging through all that. So somebody give me a forensics to dig out the um, important bits. Uh, April, you do the honor. I mean, I. I've got an ask for forensics. I got nothing. Okay. Yeah, I try. Good luck. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, cool. You s you find Ooh. a number of um, pictures from that last Friday night. Um, there's a bunch of them from inside the restaurant, which you recognize as the one you were in. Uh, mm -hmm. Pictures of plates of food. No, actually, that was not the restaurant you were in my mistake. You see a bunch of pictures from inside of a restaurant. It appears to be a Mexican restaurant of some kind. She does have a picture of the entrance and it is apparently a place called Tacos Canaste. 
Um, after that, there are some pictures of a yacht and a pictures from what, looks, from what looks I'm like joking. some pictures of what looks like a um, cocktail party in the back of the yacht. And the last picture on it is a picture of a beach house. Um, Can I use the, uh, you know, like on iPhones, they track all the data from where the, shit, the photo was taken? I forget what it's called. It's like, yeah, um, it's the GIS info. Uh, yeah, yeah, give me a, give me a, um, I think you have it, a SIGINT check. Uh, you can get the information, um, you can tell, but you can tell it's somewhere over on, um, Jekyll Island, which is a luxury resort near the, um, it's a luxury resort near Savannah, and, um, but that's it. You don't have a precise location. What about the last, um, phone calls and text messages? Uh, yeah, the last phone call, um, you can get the numbers for them. Uh, the last phone call she made was to, um, or the last text she made was to someone that the, um, contacts list identifies as Ash, and it says, I'm ready, you can come pick me up now. Well, there you go. Name Ash came up. Boyfriend. Be Ashley. It's the uh, it's that guy. It's the guy from the collective, right? It's like the, the dude who owns the company. It's the rich kid who owns the company but wants to be an artist. Yes. Uh, also, let me think. Um, the the yacht on the photo. Can we see the name? Uh, yes, it's the Rodin's Thought. As I thought. Well, I think the plot thickens. Let's see what um, Jackie and Jean have found out. But I think uh, Ash will probably be very high on our list on, of suspects. Definitely. Is there a way to do like some sort of like get some more granular information of what Ash was doing in Spain, like who he was commiserating with. I don't know if it's like social media, uh, you know, uh, scraping social media or something like that. Is there any way or is there any way to, I'm just trying to think, if I'm a hacker, is there, how would I hack this yeah. Maybe the Facebook page or something, if he has one. Right, well there's social media, but I doubt he would be all like, here I am hanging out with Satan. <laughs> um, well, maybe but, the step before he hung out with Satanists would also be interesting. Yeah. Is there anything that we can do as far as that goes? Uh, sure. Um, just give me a computer roll or if, to um, dig up the information. All right. Um, you get a bunch of information. He apparently lived in Europe for eight years. Um, he started in France, but then he moved down to Spain. He lived in Barcelona for six of the eight years. He was apparently very active in the artist movement, in the artist groups there. He seems to have spent a lot of money um, on them. Um, and he apparently would have stayed there. He even owned a um, condo there that has since been sold. But he left when, you know, after his father and sister died and he had to return to the States. Um, you do find one thing that seems to be a little bit interesting. Um, where there is a mention that a woman that he had been involved with uh, went missing 
and he was apparently questioned about it, but then nothing came out of it. There's just a brief mention that he was mentioned in the disappearance, or the, um, it's just mentioned that of the, he was involved in this disappearance of someone named Sherry, Sherry Sutton. Can I throw, a, I don't mean to chew up all the scene, but can I do a, a Google on her and see what the hell happened to her? Or whatever, not a Google, but you know. What I mean. a, a quick Google will um, just basically show you that she was apparently an American tourist who went missing in Spain. Nothing ever, she didn't turn up She was. Or? She was not found. Um, it is an open case. Uh, give me a bureaucracy check. Nope. No such luck. Uh, there is a... Uh, when you were doing the search for the, um, through the various databases on Sherry, um, you do find that there is a government... State Department document which basically says that that basically connects Sherry and um, Ashlyn but doesn't say anything else beyond it. Basically that, you know, Ashlyn was a contact of hers. I find the, the plane crash a bit interesting. Um, Sharon, could you dig a bit deeper what are the circumstances? I know that what I found was you know, nothing special but um, you know, maybe old newspaper mentioning the plane crash. Can also, uh, can I look at the, can I um, use the bureau to see what is more in, uh, information about this? Yeah, if you're trying to get the bureau to do stuff, that's always a bureaucracy check. So. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Boom, look at me. Yeah, uh, official, um, um, uh, the official document on it, the official um, NTSB investigation into it s has put it down to pilot error. Uh, there was a bad thunderstorm going on at the time, and while the tower uh, recommended waiting, the pilot said they needed to go ahead and land, they were requesting clearance to land anyway and thought they were fine. Um, and they were attempting to land and the apparently the shear winds were higher than they were expecting and they landed at an angle and skidded off the runway. Everybody on the plane died, right? Yes. Dunwood Engineering and Design apparently owns several aircraft. All right. Well, Dave, uh, do you have an idea? Shall we wait for uh, Jackie and Jean to return? I don't. I, I will assume they're back by now, but. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I think uh, we both uh, had to have a shower and change clothes, thanks to Jackie's pyrotechnics. Um, yeah. Uh, can someone remind me again what were the, the maps, positions, the locations, the significant... Sorry. What's the significance of the marked up map? Uh, you do not know at this point. And that was in uh, Ash's office? It was sitting next to the um, clay tablet. His office, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Um, well, we, I think, uh, I, uh, well, we need to, we need to, can we cross-reference these locations quick, you know, just a Google map? Um, uh, sure. They're all marked on, right? Uh, the dots. Is there anything special about the dots without um, names next to them? Uh, no. The um, yeah. You don't s notice anything about them. What you do find out when you start looking at things is that each of those dots apparently corresponds to a um, 
historical plaque. Okay. And those, some of those are on the airport, is that right? No, there's none at the airport. Okay, just, uh, I confused what the top gray area was. I think I just saw the long strip and thought airport. But yeah, if I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head. <laughs> Well, then I, uh, I will stop uh, reading significance in things that aren't that significant. <laughs> Never stop reading significance in anything. No, I put okay. those things up there for um, y'all to look at. and um, But no, that I think that's an industrial park, actually. But So um, can you no, remind yeah. me what, what the, the historical plaque, is it like an historical interesting touristy site? Or? Uh, typically, they mean something of historically... Um, importance has happened here, and there'll be a little plaque there um, describing what it was. Right. Uh, so that, I think that's the lead, but I think that's a general, a general lead. I think our major leads at the moment are Ash. Um, Ash himself is the main major lead. You know, Ash Dunwood, last person, as far as we know, the last person to uh, to see her alive. So I think Jean. we need to go check out that house, that beach house, and we need to figure out where the hell it is. Because that's like, you know, potentially the murder scene. You've got, it's a, you have a general area, but um, you just don't have a specific location. Right, I'm just saying, I think that's, you know, I think that's probably the, a major thing to follow up on. I know, we're like, Dunwood's property tax, file, tax filing for the area. Right, or something like that. Um, you can you can do that. Give me a bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, Greg's pretty good at bureaucracy. I don't know what Sharon's like. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, Greg, can. Uh, Actually, so the three of us have got sixty in bureaucracy. Uh, so Greg, be my guest. Yes. Uh, I press the button. Nothing happened. Press it again. Fifteen percent. It says on mine. No, uh, that is the. What was the other one? Oh, the previous one, yeah. Let's see, why doesn't it do anything? Oh. Can you click the modifier box? Oh, that's it, I'm stupid. <laughs> I did that, I played an alien Ooh, series and every critical. single role I did that. Oh, critical, nice. nice. Okay. I get everything. You do get everything. You get stuff that you probably don't want to know. Um, <laughs> okay. The... First thing you find out is that Dunwood Insuring Design does indeed own a beach house on Jekyll Island. Apparently they use it for entertaining guests. The second thing you learn is that for about a year now, they have been renting it out to someone named Faye Sparks. That name doesn't ring a bell. Let's see. Actually, Faye it will. Chef and resident food analyst. I still think that uh, the best bet is uh, we know the place, we can follow that up. This plaque thing, I don't know what that thing that we can. Uh, we need, to, I think, that the, the three major things that we need to close down now is uh, establish an alibi for the ex-boyfriend uh, so we can focus down on Ash Dunwood who everything's pointing to at the moment but we've got to rule out Calvin for make the case stick uh, we find Ash we need to talk to him we need to find out his what his story is see if that checks out and then take it from there as far as I can see but first, I think one of the major things would be to find out as much as we can about Cherry Suttons when we do talk to Ash. We've got as much of the background as possible. Hmm. I know that, think, uh, <clears throat> Gene, you <clears throat> are too small, I think. I mean, it seems almost ridiculous that this is just a one-man um, you know, one man deal. He, he needs to have like, um, what I'm saying is, sure, the, the, the cannibal cult thing seems a bit far out, but 
Um, I don't think that if we I see what you're saying, on... Greg. I do. I do agree that probably he's got accomplices, and that uh -huh. you know to go up and down the coast and this Epicurean society, and uh, he's uh -huh. definitely going to either be packed full of uh, either possible accomplices or witnesses to anything that might have happened. But remember, the crime we've got in front of us is uh, Sarah, and the one that we that's fresh, that's not a cold case, is Sarah. So, you know, it's what we should focus on, really. Yes, definitely. Um, sure. I mean, obviously, method game wise, feel free to start. <laughs> you know, just hunting down every random <laughs> lead kind of thing. But uh, I want to make. I want to make a human on uh, Gene. If uh, I got the suspicion that Gene is put into the group to, you know, keep everything contained. Is that your FBI agents who have been assigned a case? So yes, none of you know. None of you know about Delta Green right now. No, if no, you, no. <clears throat> if you have heard of Delta Green, you believe it to be a security clearance. That you don't have. I will happily fail a human to test horse. <laughs> I am just uh, focusing on the murder of this young woman, uh, and everything else is something that we can pick up uh, with. If we if we can pin it to Ash, we've got the biggest source of intel of all, right? Mm. But you, you, what I'm getting from you is that you're very pragmatic. Oh, this is the task at hand. Don't get too um, creative. Yeah, the, there's all, the story always breaks when you pin it down to something, right? <clears throat> the idea. Uh, you can get lost. Otherwise, you get lost in the weeds. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that you know it seems to have political implications as well as a council member, as part of the the club, who also shut down the investigation, which can be just public relations, or it could be. Um, that he has uh, dirty hands. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I think there's a whole lot of mess going on, but we have to remember that our authority is on the investigation of Sarah Martin. And so far, we have enough evidence to support interviews, uh, warrants, searches, etc. on Sarah's death. We don't have enough to link anybody else involved here with any of the other deaths. Other than so, the word of a coroner who won't, who won't, be, who won't go on the record. Hmm. Uh, what do you think, um, Jackie? Do you wanna be part of a group of food connoisseurs? I, would, I mean, go ahead. I, I would hold on. Uh, I was thinking that, like, maybe I could, like, I don't know if that list public of who all the members are, but if it's not, I can, like, you know, I mean, if it is, we'll just get the list of members, but if it's not, I can, you know, uh, bust up their little WordPress website and uh, take take the listing of the members or whatever, mm -hmm. and see if there's any mapping to, you know, that might help the investigation. There's no official list online. You can, of course, try to get, break into the website and get their um, database. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Don't do that. Critical. Nice. Nice. You can get the um, full list of members. There are several hundred of them, most of whom <laughs> are um, just normal members. Sure. There's like 20 or 25 elite members. Sarah shows as one of them, by the way. So does Ashlyn. So does Whitehead, Lynn Russ, Faye Sparks. Um, several people have um, some sort of flag. You don't know what it means, but um, there are six members who are tagged specifically. They are Mike Whitehead, Lynn Russ, Faye Sparks, Leon Pearson, Ethel Rogers, um, and Ashlyn Dunwood. That's, there's face sparks again. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. Ash is in there, but that's face sparks. It's a, it's a second 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I, we don't know what any of this means yet. <clears throat> You're right. We do. We, we need to practice murder and not necessarily uh, bring down the whole Roman Empire. So, but yeah, you're right. We should just focus on the job at hand, and then, you know. One significant thing, though, Dennis is Sarah Martin's name on there anyway. Yeah, uh, she's on there as one of the elite members, but she's not one of the six that has that special tag next to it. What well, does the tag look like? Is it just like a checkbox, or is it like a, you know, like a freaking upside cross or whatever? It's the letter M. Neat. Oh. Creepy. Uh, so it's it's late night, right? Uh, By this point, yes. Yeah. Um, I want to put in a request for the Cherry Sutton case to be, uh, you know, delivered to me in the morning, delivered to us in the morning. Okay. Um, and my plan tomorrow is like, it's still to uh, to rule out Calvin. Uh, because if everything's pointing towards Ash, I want to be able to point to rule out, you know, someone that he could potentially throw blame onto. <clears throat> okay. What's, what, it's, what's Faye's name? It's Faye what? Sparks. Sparks. I'd like to do like a, a, a deep dive on her before hitting the hay. Okay. Give me a computer bureaucracy check. Bureaucracy or computer science? Either one. Are you doing it your own, on your own, or are you trying to get somebody else to look it up for you? No, it's, it's me. It's, uh, it's uh, sharing. I got a success, 13%. Okay, well, that's the difference. If you want to try it on your own, you can do a computer science. If you want to try to get somebody else... Oh, I don't need anybody to okay. help me. I'll just hack my way through it, you know? Okay, yeah. Faye Sparks, you will find out. Uh, she has lived in Savannah for about 12 years now. Uh, she has been... Previous to that, she was a chef in New Orleans. She fled New Orleans in 2008 after Hurricane Katrina flooded the area and moved her store here. She has a um, she has her own restaurant in here called um, Bi the Bayou Breakfast, even though they're open all day long. Um, she f was the actual founder of the Savannah Epicurial Society, and she founded it shortly after arriving here. When exactly did she arrive here? In 2000 and... 2008. 2008. Alright, well it gives us like the kind of a, 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 you know, it gives us a, a connection with, uh, you know, with everything now. She's not a mysterious figure. Makes sense that she's in the picture. So, all right. My computer science, by the way, is eighty percent. That's why. Eighty <laughs> percent in the soft, in the human stuff, and I've uh, failed like four rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind that she is one of those people who's been exposed to things people were not meant to know, which means she is mentally fragile. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> um, yeah, is it okay to pick up in the morning stuff then? Sure. We'll assume y'all go to sleep. Uh, it's the next morning now. Um, your information on um, Sherry Sutton has come back. Uh, it is considered a very cold case. It is known that she was in Barcelona. She was a college student who was doing a um, year backpacking through Europe. She disappeared. She was last known to be in Barcelona. While she was there, she was known to be in um, the company of Ashlyn Dunwood, who was apparently because he was a fellow American. Um, it's just that she disappeared. That was the last place she was seen, and nobody's seen her since. Um... You do find a note that the State Department suggested that maybe the Spanish authorities didn't want to question Ashland too much. Well, you know, 
well connected rich kid. Uh, well, obviously he's well connected rich kid. So. Yeah, has he ever been questioned in connection with this in America by an American authority? No. No. Uh, do they have the um, the contact numbers for the uh, for a family? It's from several years ago, but um, yes. Um, I'll give uh, I'll give that a ring. Um, hello. Hi, uh, my name is Agent Oliver with the Atlanta FBI. Uh, yes. Am I speaking to the family of, uh, of Sherry Sutton? Uh, yeah, this is um, Keith. What, her father? Um, have y'all found something out about her? I mean, I, it's I, been years. We haven't heard anything. I, I know, Mr. Sutton. I know. Um, I'm afraid I don't have any any news for you today. I was just hoping you could help me with some questions. Uh, it may be nothing, um, but you know, it may help another family. I'm I'm sorry. Haven't we answered enough questions? I mean, yes. we told you everything we know. Uh, you've told uh, the Spanish authorities. I can see here. Is that right? Uh yes. The um, Polizia and um, Barcelona. Okay. Um. Well. I'm just wondering, uh, do you know of uh, an Ash Dunwood, Ashland, Ashland Dunwood? Um, yeah, they they talked about him. Apparently, he had seen her. Um, we didn't talk to him. They did ask him. You know, yeah, he went out with her for a couple of times because when she was in Barcelona, and then he says she left and was going to go on. And I mean, beyond remembering her and that she was there, that's all he ever said. Sherry never spoke to you about Ash. Pardon? Did Sherry never spoke to you about Ash? Uh, never no. Any letters or messages? Or... No, okay. she was actually... Um, look, I'm sure y'all know this. We... She... Always felt that we were too controlling of her and too restrictive of her. And so, as soon as she turned 18, she left and went to Europe and... She didn't even have any money. She'd work little jobs and whatever there to get by. And so, no, she wasn't talking to us. We didn't even, you know, it It was actually a while before anybody even realized, we even realized she had disappeared. Do you miss something? Pardon? I'm sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Sutton. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, we just... <sighs> I just wish I could see her again and maybe fix it again, you know? Yeah. Um, can I do a cument just to see if I pick on any reticence or anything or whatever? Uh, sure. Success? Um, it feels like it's a dead end. I'm he he feels kind of guilty on what happened to her. Um, Obviously, they had some means of keeping track of where she was, even though he claims she didn't, because they, um, he claims she wasn't in touch with her, but he knew she had gone missing, so. In touch with you. Who, uh, informed you that she was missing, Mr. Devon? <sighs> okay, yeah, okay. She had, I gave her a credit card when she left, and she had been using it, and um, she still wouldn't talk to us, but when we told her if she was ever in trouble to use it, and she did usually a couple of times a month, and when she had gone a month, six weeks without using it, we started trying to track her down, and we even hired a private detective to go over there and he was only able to f track her as far as Barcelona. We don't know where she went after that. But no one used the credit card either so we don't know. Did you send me a copy of that credit card bill? Mr. Dutton? Mr. Sutton? Uh, sure, we can do that. Thank you. Um, it may not go anywhere, but, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, 
I'm sorry to have brought all this back up again. I'll I'll be in touch if there's anything more. Thank you. No, I'll hang up the phone. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if there's any. I'm, I'm not sure if there's anything there, guys. But uh, let's. They'll be sending over the over the uh, over the credit card bill soon. Uh, we can add that to the huge amount of documents and <laughs> uh, clues we have. I mean, uh, working theory. Um, Ash killed. Well, the body was found. The body was found um, at this point two days ago, or yesterday. Uh, no, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, the body of the daughter. Um, Sherry Sutton, the body was never found. She just disappeared. Uh, and they were able to determine that one of the last people to see her was Ashley. Was Ashley. So my working theory is um, he kills her, whatever. Um, whatever drove him to do it, he ate her or parts of her. And that is like the uh, the... The, the first incident where he realized that he really likes human flesh, you think? Space Fox, uh, he joins the Epicurial Society, becomes their sponsor, and uses it in his family's uh, business to go up and down the coast, getting more meals. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so that's a, I, I, I see the theory, let's see if we can make it work. I would like to check the photos that Jackie took from that um, clay tablet. Um, can we somehow, I don't know. Yeah, it, will, it would be easy to just flip the image and read it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Flip the image is what I... Yeah, it, it is saying that, that on this location, one of the first um, wool warehouses in the city of, Atlanta, of Savannah was opened in 1781. I, I missed that part. Um, basically, it is a historical marker saying that on this, near this site in 1781, one of the first wool warehouses was opened in the city of Savannah. Oh, that is what the clay thing says? All right. Yes, it's, it's apparently to be used to cast a historical marker. Huh. See, uh, I have another question, which is from the list that Sharon pulled from the website, is there Steve on it? among the elite members uh there is a steve crawler who is on the list but he's not listed as an elite member or excuse me he's an elite member but not one of the um ones, ones with that little tag well i guess it would be a good idea to Maybe ask Steve about the <coughs> evening. Maybe find out who the uh, the young man was was yelling at him. Because I would I think it's a real bad idea to this... go to Steve first. You know, like Steve, you had an uh... argument with a guy on a boat after a waitress took. <laughs> a waitress like that's all we have on Steve. You know, there's no. Uh... Yeah. I don't want to go at Steve, I want to go at the young man, because that is the one who... Like my theory is um, the young man was uh, was aware that the waitress was in trouble of being killed. Take, the picture so Ash, take a picture of Ashland to that waitress. She can confirm whether it was him or not. I don't think it was Ashland. We don't know. I think it was... I would assume that it's someone within the society who would be willing to spill the beans. But if we can get, um, I don't know, maybe pictures of all the elite members, 
and take it to the waitress. Maybe that is a first step. Uh, can we get, um, you know, can Sharon maybe pull uh, pictures of all the elite members from uh, the net? Uh, we will assume that as FBI, you can easily get um, dry copies of driver's oh, yeah. license photos or passport photos. <clears throat> I mean, Sarah can try to get them, or Sharon can try to get them faster, but you can get them. So I don't know. I, I assume that we are sitting at the breakfast in the hotel and planning the the next steps. What we do? Yep. So I, I will uh, I will go see the waitress again. Unless you think one of you have a better rapport with her. Becky's the maybe the waitress. Uh. The waitress is, uh, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll come. I reckon she'll confirm that without any kind of fuss, you know. <clears throat> okay, cool. So that is what I will do. Uh, uh, I. We have. Well, I, I do think that it would be useful to take one of one of you. One of I can go with you to that because I think it would be useful to have a. I'll go chase that. I just want to go after Calvin, basically. That's uh, what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to rule out Calvin. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the is waitress, good police work. Yeah, the waitress, uh, I do think that, narratively speaking, it would be a bit weird for you to show up and be like, hi, I'm the friend of those two strange women who talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I feel like it's a, it's a thing I mean, worth Jack, off in the photos. Jackie can come along, obviously. Yeah. So my, my, I think Calvin rule out whatever, uh, the waitress get identify, and then my personal, like, you know, my, my three-point plan is we have to find out what Ash's story is and then try and poke holes in it. Okay. So, who wants to go first? Uh, Jackie, <coughs> excuse me. Jackie, let's go to see the waitress. If we if we can identify the young man and talk to him and maybe poke a hole into the whole um, conspiracy, if there is one. Um, we have something, some leverage on Ashlyn. Do we have multiple pictures that we can show her so that if she IDs him, it has a better chance of standing up in court? Mm -hmm. You can find multiple pictures of done of Ashlyn easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, when you do a lineup. I always want to make sure there's different people in it, so when somebody picks out that person, it, it's, it's it's stronger. So we need to have some additional yeah. pictures of people. There's no we... there's no proof here, though. Look at this isn't a lineup. All this is is that someone she had an argument with someone. On a, he had an argument on a boat. That is all we can prove with this say, story. You just need to be able to like give her half a dozen pictures and say, hey, "Do you see any of these men talking to her?" I mean, we can do that. Uh, I, I think that we are, are almost more confusing her than. I mean, she will probably remember that because she remembered that night pretty vividly, yeah. because it was horrifying for her. So I think she will remember the face of the the, the young man. Maybe it's Ashlyn. Maybe it's somebody else. Let's see. Okay. So I think we we get we get all the pictures from the uh, elite mem uh, elite members. Um, and go down to the the chicken thing. Partridge oh, barn. The partridge farm. Barn. Barn. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you go there and show them to, you can find Allison. Was her name? Mm -hmm. You can find her, and she will confirm that. Yeah, all of those people were there that night, or a lot of them were, because they were. You know, it was the society night and she will identify Ashlyn as the guy who was doing the yelling oh wow interesting it goes my theory <laughs> uh, and Steve is the Steve that we know of from yeah. the Epicurean society yeah okay cool yeah you know Steve was who she went there with yeah yeah, yeah. 
just wanted to check it wasn't like fake you know, <laughs> paranoia kind of stuff. Uh, let's cool. Um, I will go to see Calvin then. I guess uh, I will give him a phone. I'll ring him up. I'll phone his phone number. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in class. Hi. Uh, I'm trying to get in touch with Sarah. Have you seen her? <sighs> no, and good luck. Yeah, uh, about that, Calvin. Uh, my name is FBI I Agent Jane Oliver with the, Savannah, with the Atlanta office. I need to speak to you immediately. You're in class? <sighs> well, kinda. It's, you know, it's still online, but yeah. Yeah. Um, stay where you are. I'm going to come around. We're going to have a quick word, okay? Why? What's this about? I'm sure it's nothing, but Sarah's been reported missing. I'll see. I'll speak to you soon, okay? <sighs> Whatever. I don't like this guy already. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I head over there. Uh, I, I think I actually made that phone call from the campus, now that I think about it. You know, like I drove to the campus because I know that he's somewhere around there. Well, he's, then... an, he's an apartment near the campus. He's not actually in a dorm. Yeah, I, I, I meant to ask him for his address as well. But, you you uh, had that from before somewhere. Oh, okay. Then I, you know what, uh, I ring him up before I go into the knock on the door. <laughs> and then I knock on the door. He opens the door a few minutes later, you know, and he's standing there going, oh, okay, what's this about, you know? Well, can you tell me you where you were on the night of the 2nd of March? <sighs> what was that? Uh, he stops and thinks. He says, Last Friday, yeah, I, I was doing my, um, I'm trying to do the legal agents thing. I'm trying to go pro. So we're doing practice that night. You can ask anybody in the guild. What's this all about? Did you, did you stream the session at all? Of course. Uh, could you show me? Uh, really? You, you're yeah. just going to come in and ask me to show you stuff around? I don't have to let you in. I don't care if you're... I'm asking you to like pull out my phone. Just show me where you put it on YouTube, dude. I didn't do it on YouTube. I did it on Twitch. Then on Twitch, whatever. Come on. Okay, okay. Here's my channel. Jesus. Cool. Uh, and I corroborate his story with that, right? Yeah. Uh, th well, and then I say, someone was playing League of Legends that night. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, can I human him? Yeah. To, uh, you know, I, I, I like say the, uh, the guy who was supposed to be him, I give him, I, I can really shit talk him, you know, like, oh, what's that tactic? It's useless kind of thing to try and see if he gets proud about are it. Are you kidding? You know, what are you, some kind of bottom feeder? No, you, you got to play the middle. You always play the middle. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> uh, do I, am I being cheeky to say, do I get a modifier for poking him in that way? <laughs> no, as far as you can tell, he's, um, telling the truth. In fact, he almost gets offended when you're... He kind of gets offended when you're telling him he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, uh, well, then I say, look, Calvin, you're a real asshole. Right? Yeah, so are you. He but slams the door I in your face. Uh, and I knock on the door uh, and I say, Calvin, you're, an, you're a suspect in an ongoing murder investigation. Come back to the door. That, uh, he opens the door to that. He's like, what? Mur I haven't murdered anyone. I step into the door past, like, I, you know, I like hey, to do that, and that cop, like, step in, and I go, take a seat, Calvin. Uh, give me something to intimidate him with. Uh, da -da -da. uh, persuade? Persuade will work. 3%. Okay. He, he... You know, he's not quite used to somebody being quite this forward to him, so he steps back and sits down. He's going, look, you you can't be in here. Calvin, at the moment, you're not under arrest. I'm just taking a statement from you, but you're being very uncooperative. I've already cleared that you're not where your, your movements were that night, watching your weak-ass League of Legends game. But I have other questions, Calvin. Sarah is dead. That seems to really take him aback. I mean, he goes white as a sheet, and he's going, Sarah's 
dead? Yeah. Oh, God, you know. Oh, God, I, I, I thought... Look, I, I thought when she got tired of that rich guy, she... Realized he was just using her, and he'd come back. She'd come back again. She just... I... I... I How did she die? What what happened? I just need you to answer some questions for me. And if we get this all, if we can manage to find whoever did this, then I then you'll find out then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, so I I was waiting on her to come back. I I just. When was the last time you saw Sarah? She, she was at the co-op uh, sometime last week. Um, I came by. I, I, I told her how, how good her flowers looked. She she always liked that. And um, she said she didn't want to talk to me anymore. She said that, um, you know, she said that she found someone who really appreciated her and all that. And, um, God... How did how how did she die? I mean, what happened? She wasn't sick or anything, did she? She didn't come down with this thing, did she? I mean, Sarah was murdered. Oh God! That's why I'm here, Calvin. I'm. I, look, I. And I'm thinking I should have brought the therapist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Calvin, look, the. Any Sarah, any pretense he had of being tough guy, angry, that sort of thing, has completely collapsed. Oh yes, I'm, uh, I'm getting that. Yeah, uh, he was a dick until he actually understood what the hell was going on. Um, I would like, I ask him, uh, this rich guy, the new boyfriend. Uh yeah, it, it it's that Dunwood guy. He he yeah, ran the Ashton co-op. Dunwood. Yeah. Yeah, he ran the co-op. He just suddenly got really interested in her. And probably, you probably know. because you know, he spe- he likes to show off that he can speak Spanish, and so did she. And um, he didn't care that I spoke Spanish, but um, you know, I think they liked thinking they could talk together when every other people other people were around and no one would know what they were saying. You know, and they they were being all they were all being that really sappy lovey dovey thing. I mean, I know he was a he was a fake, but um he was he was just trying to get to her. That's all. Have you seen Ash recently? I don't know. Um I got my own rig here now so I don't need to use the one at the co op anymore much anymore. Um I go by for I go by to get some coffee every now and then and the uh, and the guys at the brewery let some of I shouldn't tell you this, but the guys at the brewery let some of us get some of their beers, even though some of us are underage. And um, they said he hasn't been in for a while. Apparently, something he's really mad because the um, smelter broke, and they can't get anybody to come fix it. So he gets for buying damn old equipment anyway. What Sarah was working on uh, in this piece, and I show him the picture of uh, the stained glass stuff. Uh, no, it looks like some kind of pixel art, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I I do computer graphics, guy. I'm an Unreal Engine person, you know. You know, they're they're doing that. They're making movies in that now, you know. Be yeah, argue or be angry with Sarah. It, it was... Well, I didn't kill her. No, wait, no, no, she no, broke... No, Ash, Ash. <laughs> I know you didn't kill her, Calvin. Did you see Ash ever be angry or... No, 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 he was, he was always so nice to her. I mean... God, I mean... He, I mean, why would he do that? I mean... He he was he he's the one who puts all that money into the co-op. Why would he why would he hurt somebody there? I wouldn't um 
I think I've got enough here, Calvin. Uh, thank you for your statement. I, I don't, I wouldn't recommend leaving town. Okay, yeah, sure. I mean, God, Sarah, I mean, maybe if I just tried a little harder. You know, she, she got upset because, you know, Friday's guild night and I didn't take her out. And maybe if I'd taken her out more, she would have, oh God, you know, he's just sort of talking to himself, head down in his hands. I tell him to, um, to ring a friend, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. Leave him to it. Find somebody who cares, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm comforting, but I have a job to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. I, I think that wasn't hugely lucrative, but uh, we had to cross it off. Yep. What's next, guys? How do you want to come at this? I think we should... Uh, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the working theory is it's not a one-man job. And the people with a flag uh, might be part of it, right? Is that reasonable to assume, or is that too much cannibal cult for you? I, I think that that's reasonable to assume. Uh, so, but it is also like uh, that doesn't give us anything actionable at the moment. You know, we have no evidence really to support that strongly. That is true, but. I mean, we are not here only for Sarah. If it would be only Sarah, they would have sent, no, like, less qualified people. We are here yes. for like a but huge that's... group of dead people who are all mutilated and killed. Uh, yes, Greg, but we we can only solve those by linking them to Sarah's death. When they, it you is... know, when they catch serial killers, they don't catch them and then from the cold case from years ago and then that solves the live case today you know they solved the live case today none of the old cases seem to provide us with much uh, you know they've not provided us with any links that, well, that drive evidence that's not true we know that uh, the places where the construction sites of the company are um, are all linked not all but linked to some of the um, yeah that's bodies. good that's good circumstantial evidence it'll, it'll so, support if we can pin an actual crime on them. So it will my further investigations into those deaths, you know. But that is at the moment, so yeah. the moment we, I think we can, like we we have four people. Uh, we can, you know, we can focus on um, on Sarah, um, but we can also check, for example, the other members of the club and where they were around the time when the killings. Uh, appeared like when if we can it, it would be another circumstantial evidence if we could prove that they were um you know in any of these places Epicurean, around the epicurean society uh we don't have anything that links it to the different locations do we other no than, that other is true. dunwood is the link not the epicurean society so i think that's right. worth changing up um yeah I, I do think that, like, as much as we keep pushing it off, we need, we know, we didn't know his name, we didn't know who he was, we need to, mm. you know, police would go speak to Ashton Dunwood immediately, yes. right? Uh, yes, I think that, that should be the next step. Next step should be Ashland, and then, I don't think we're done here. But anyways, that's a good call. Uh, my, we... my question is, I don't, if we want to keep the thing open for infiltrating the Epicurean society, yes. that means that Jackie can't show a face to any of the um, any of the people that we invest in, that we directly talk to here. And Sharon's background, is that FBI as well? She's in SA. And is the clearance like so, I don't know what it's called, is you know, uh, Sharon's um, biography could be pulled from the net as well. No, you, would, you would not uh, find Sharon's and, you know, NSA the, analyst thing. The NSA is the um, National Security Agency. It is the most covert acknowledged U.S. Okay. agency. Like I'm sure there are more agencies that are unacknowledged, but it's the most covert one that they <laughs> let people know about. So, I don't know, the two FBI uh, agents go there? 
that makes sense to me. Uh, I just don't want to, you know, if, if the other guys have anything that they want to do, I don't want to uh, mm -hmm. force them into doing the other stuff, you know? So, uh, Abe, fuck it. Do you want, what do you guys want to do? I don't know, is there any more stuff that we want, and want me to kind of you know, chew on and see if I can pull You, you could definitely out. do the, um, epic, you know, trying to uh, track the locations of the Epicurean Society members. Because uh, you've got, like, their names and stuff. The yeah, it's trying yeah. to establish any sort of link across those two, those two uh, sets of data, you know? Alright, and then also maybe uh, the, just the, Ash, the Ash's family in general. Or is he, is he the sole survivor? No, he's got another... He's got His, a mother who's he's, somewhere else. Mother is yeah. still alive. Alright. Okay, uh, okay, Sharon, give me an int times five. Yeah, with 3%, I'm going to call that one good. Um, you know you can track people through cell phone records, and you have a bunch of names. So you should be able to get, um, you know, again, through your um, NSA magic powers, um, you should be able to tell where a bunch of cell phones were. So again, computer to do it yourself, bureaucracy to see if somebody else can do it for you. I think the three percent was uh, persuade. But that oh, was you rolled a persuade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, sorry, I was muted. That was that was. Uh, <laughs> that was, was I got a success. Okay. Um, yeah, you can get up. You get everybody's cell phone records. What all do you um, want to do with them? Well, first, can we map their cell phone? records or locations to uh, any any of the murder scenes? Like, are they there at the same time? Uh, yeah, you can find a couple of things. Um, you can find that um, both Ashland's cell phone and um, Faye Sparks' cell phone were... One of them was in... They were both in Jacksonville on... January 28th of 2020. They were both in Wilmington on the April 3rd of 2020. They were both in Wilmington on June 20th of 2020. And they were both in Charleston on um, December 1st of 2020. That's pretty incriminating. Circumstantially hmm. Also, somebody give me an int times five. I can do it. I have a high intelligence, but you one hundred go on this thing. Is it one? Is it? Click on your character sheet. Click on the skill or on the intelligence button. Anything basically gr that's green, you can click on, and it will. But for the times five, it'll do that. Uh, yeah, if you look at the right spot, you see it's, there is a time slot column on there. Yeah, see? Seventeen. Five times seventeen is more than seventy-three. Eighty-five, but yeah. I don't see where the, how you get the times five from that. I don't think it does the role like that. You just you can just cross-reference oh, oh, this I result with that. that. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. My bad. Matt, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> there there's, a, there's, a, there's a gray there's a gray column called uh, times five that tells you what your intelligence times five is. Which which is like a quarter inch wide. I don't know why it's done that way, but yeah, I was like, okay, I did five. I did math, but yeah, okay, so I got it. You got it. Um, 
There are photos on Sarah's phone of both the yacht and that beach house. Okay? And you have the geotag on it and had the general area of the beach house. So you know it was there. The phone was found in her car at her dorm at the campus. But the last thing on it was she texted, texted Ash and asked him to come pick her up. How did the phone get back to the car? Shenanigans, me thinks. <laughs> CCTV from the um, the dome car park? Because it was in the car, right? So, yep. Uh, it's in a campus car park. So There's probably some sort of CCTV. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't know if uh, I think. Yeah, let's let's follow that up before we go pay Ash a visit. I think. Bucket, do you want to do that, or do you want us to one of us to go for it? A follow up on what? The CCTV of the car. Uh, yeah, of of uh, Sarah's car. car. Yeah. Um. That doesn't really fit into any of my skill sets. Well it then. Like uh, more of a hacking with it. Yeah, oh. I, I will. Uh, I will. We'll go check out campus security, or we'll hack into it, or whatever. I was thinking that one thing that might be perfect for for Jackie would be those historical plaques. If you decided to follow up on something in between, you know. But I think that is a dead end, to be honest. Uh, yeah. What do, what do you think about um, going to the beach house with our com combined forensic medical thing? We try to find because that could be potentially the murder scene. Find out some blood. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of probably the way to go. <clears throat> yeah, I'll tell you what, so you guys go to the um, to the beach uh -huh. house. Um, me and Sharon will work out how to, you know, look at this car. Uh, and mm -hmm. then after that, I will go at Ash, right? Uh, I think, does that sound good that's, to everyone? Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Have we figured out what those red dots and red lines on the map mean yet? Uh, it's this historical plex, but to me it seems that he's just working. That 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 is just a thing he was was doing as a yeah, job. He's making, them. he's making his own, isn't he? So he probably wants those for reference. I mean, we can we can check them out. I don't think it is a priority. It it, it just could be, you know, it's his job to make these plex. Um, maybe a job from the city council or something. Character? He's rich. Of course, right? are you actually arguing that? No, 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 no. That that okay, is the, the most. I do hope that there's something um, like yeah, mystical yeah. about this place. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> I just love that Greg was like cannibal cult from second one. <laughs> <laughs> but historical facts, no way. Yeah. So, we have someone who's independently wealthy making plaques as a job. That doesn't make sense. That's his art practice. Isn't that just his art practice? That's his shtick? Well, that he's making... yeah. The Jackie. art he's doing for himself seems to be those big, brutalist iron plates welded together. Oh, okay. But the things that you learned about him is that he was supporting the art co-op, he was supporting the Epicurial Society, and he was working with the Historical Society. Okay, so this is part of his philanthropy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if, if you've got a hunch, Jackie, and you want to, uh, you want to check it out. I mean, you've been the best one of us here to see if there's anything weird, hinky about it. You could I mean, always stop the, off on the way somewhere. Yeah, exactly. On the way to the beach house, we can, if we pass um, a couple of these places, we can definitely check out what the historical significance is. Do we have addresses the on these actually dots, say. or is it just? In yeah, the you can get addresses on them easily enough. Yeah, I want to. Look, I actually want to stop at the library and okay. dig up anything that I can on these addresses. For Savannah is an old city. Yeah, it's one of the oldest ones on the East Coast. I want to go back for a hundred, hundred and fifty years just to check out those sites. Because I mean, I'm talking about the city center by the river. So all of these sites 
they'll have had something there during that time period. Yeah. And that's after the Civil War, so it should everything should have been rebuilt by that point. Yeah. The march to the sea ended here, so. Yeah. But old Sherman. Okay. Um, so what do you want me to roll for that? Intelligence? Uh, you want to use all my skills? Do you have history? I don't think I have much history. I think everybody has 20 as a default. I do have history at 60. Oh, cool. Alright, so rolling on one of 60. Maybe 100. Oh, that's a mess. Okay, you can't find anything specific about it. Um, one thing you will notice is that yes events of some kind of historical importance did happen in the general vicinity of these but you know n all of them seem to be fairly obscure historical facts you know if, if you were going to be doing a history of the city this wouldn't be the first dozen plaques you put up Um, is there anything weird that happened in any of these places? Murders, uh, any kind of local ghost stories, anything like that? Uh, not really. I mean, Savannah does have a lot of ghost stories, of course. I mean, any city founded in the 17th century would. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just that, you know, the places that they're being pa placed seem kind of um, random. Okay. It's, it's hard to understand why the historical society would want to designate these particular places as opposed to others. Yeah. Well, if it and comes from the... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, that, more than anything else, sticks out. I mean, if this had been where notable city figure had been born for example or died or if it was a place where a civil war era officer was murdered or something along those lines that makes sense but this is this is almost like george washington slept here type stuff yeah like kind of obscure. yeah okay. even sometimes not even that obscure i mean this is stuff like um the third department store opened across the street from here I mean, um, presumably the uh, Historical Society gave Ashland the, um, what is it called, like the objective to do that. Maybe we can check up on them. Okay. If you call the Historical Society and ask them about it, they will kind of go, he, they will tell you that, um, I'm going a little faster than normal because we're closing in on time for the day. Mm -hmm. um, they will tell you that, um, yeah, he um, he said he wanted to put up some historical markers and would give them to us for us to add to our register. And we went, well, okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to turn down someone wanting to help document the city's history. But, yeah, we never asked him to do anything specific. And he just decided to do this on his own for some reason. But again, we're not going to turn down any, I mean, too many people don't pay attention to history anymore. And we're not going to turn down anyone who is willing to do what little bit they can. So can you mail? Okay. Did the Historical Society give him this information? Or did he just go out and dig it up on his own? He's apparently doing his own research. I mean... I mean, the stuff we haven't followed up on everything he's done, but the stuff he has done, we've looked up, and yeah, it's some of the more obscure history. But he says it's the obscure things that need to be remembered the most, so that's why he's doing this. Can you mail us a list of all the um, uh, the places that he 
deemed uh, interesting enough to put a back there. Uh, yeah, well, um, well, we'll send you the ones he's told us about. I mean, mm. he, he, we don't have his full plans. And then, Jackie, uh, if we're going to visit the boat house or the the, the beach house, sorry, um, we can drop at least past one of these places to check what uh, what is there. Yeah. Okay, you will stop at one on the way there. Um, it's in a fairly small area on the corner of one street. I mean, it's almost like they just... Um, it looks like there was a planting bed here at one point that they've he's cleared out to put this there. It's a seven-sided marble obelisk that's about three feet high on one end and four feet high on the other. It's sloped. And on the sloped top, there is this seven-sided um, bronze plaque that says, on this site in 1853, a altercation between two wagon drivers led to a major brawl in the street. <laughs> I look at Jackie. Ashland is obviously insane. I mean, the, the human meat eating stuff is creepy, but this is just ridiculous. Uh, why does this marker, was this marker, this obelisk part of what he put up? Yeah. In fact, when you were in the, um, in his studio, you saw similar marble plaques up there. So he's. And I'm doing this as both a player and as a character. He has an electric furnace to do bronze casting. Yeah. Clay that he's using to cast bronze plaques. Yes. And yet he's also putting up marble obelisks with, with marble plaques on them. No, it's a bronze plaque on the top okay. of a marble obelisk. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It is bolted to the top of the obelisk. Jesus. I'm going to take some pictures of this. Because this is... This is weird. I mean, at this point, the murders almost seem normal. <laughs> this... This feels weird. But just a private citizen randomly putting up monuments with the historical society's, I guess, sort of overall blessing, but without telling them what he's doing. They're just kind of finding out after the fact. Do you think that maybe inside of one of these, like inside of this thing, and Greg um, will knock against the knock on the marble it's a body is it big enough oh yeah it's big enough it's where he's hiding the uh, the other <clears throat> victims that we haven't found I mean it's it's marble well it, it's is, does this look like solid marble or does it look like it's no if you remember that's why I knocked if you remember on the, when you were up in his workshop, he had several marble slabs. You didn't get an exact count because you were in a hurry. Stone slabs, yes. And there was a wheelbarrow and several bags of cement. The implication is that the slabs are just on the outside and the interior is filled with cement. How thick were those slabs in his uh, third floor studio? About a half inch. Look at Jefferson City. Can we go to a hardware store? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this hardware store. Can we get a, like a hammer or something? Oh, we're getting a sledgehammer. Okay. <laughs> Not a nine pound hammer. We're getting like a full blown sledgehammer. Okay. 
Becky, I know that you're not with the FBI. You're prone to start fires in um, like privately owned buildings. We are not planning to, you know, hack with a sledgehammer at broad daylight at a thing. Why not? No. You're kind of you know, subtle. The 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 first of all, the bronze plate is just bolted onto the top. Maybe it's covering something. You know what? Let's get ourselves a uh, drill as well. Some uh, sockets. Take that. I mean, if it's bolted to the top, maybe we can. Maybe we can see what's inside. Maybe we don't have to take a sledgehammer to it. Maybe we're we still getting the sledgehammer. <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do it at broad daylight. Is what I'm saying. Oh, well. Okay. So, what kind of neighborhood is this? Uh, semi-commercial. It's a little on the run-down side. Any kind of residential presence? Not that you see. There's a bunch of shops. I have an idea, uh, Jackie. What we do is... Come back and knock this thing down at night? Yes, we just we just drive with a car against it. Oh, oops. I'm really sorry. Is it in a place where we could do that? It's right on the side of the street, yeah. And then they have to put it down because it is really damaged. And then, uh, oh wow, there's a body inside. Mm. I like your thinking. You need a car that can't be traced. Mm -hmm. so otherwise, um, it's going to show up as like, you know, an FBI agent rented this car, or owns this car, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Sharon can probably get us a. Uh, car without tracing it back to anyone else. But shall we check out the beach house? Look for some blood spatters? Oh, why not? We need to have something to do until dark. <laughs> okay, you can go down to the beach house, and we're going to have to be stopping at about this point, because mm -hmm. we're at four. So, so you will get to the beach house um, next time. I will just leave you with one thing. Um, who was it that was taking all the pictures of the um, obelisk? Jackie. Oh, that was, yeah, me. Jackie. Okay, Jackie. Uh, while you're in the car heading to the beach house, you start looking through your pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, It's you know, 10 a.m. at this point. Broad daylight. Yeah. Why are all the pictures taken at night? I mean, there's stars and a moon in the sky. Please make a sanity check. <laughs> all right. Um, so with sanity, I need to roll under, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, you t you lose one sanity. Um, I didn't actually roll yet. Oh, I thought I heard you say miss. No, I I I said Dennis. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so it's roll one d one hundred. Correct. Well, yeah, I. 82 over 70. Okay. You lose um, one sanity point. Um, everybody else in the vehicle. Um, Jackie is suddenly hyperventilating. Uh, Jackie, and, are you okay? And staring at her phone. I'm hearing a massive echo. I said, Jackie is hyperventilating and staring at her phone. I mean, Greg is, is obviously um, a counselor, so he will stop the car um, and turn to Jackie and say, Jackie, is everything okay? I'm just going to show you the phone with the pictures of the obelisk. 
That's tricky. <laughs> Do I have to make a, a sanity roll as well? Uh, yep, because you're seeing something impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you saw her take the pic photos. Yeah. Um, sanity points? Is that why I uh, uh, push? Yeah, you should just be able to click on it. Yeah. That's why I know. Okay, you you get to lose a point too. It was a failure, isn't it? Yeah. Before then, or... so how do you want us to track on the character keeper? Do you want to just do we just deduct it from? Yeah, just we, just there's there should be a and current. Yeah, there sh you should be, see a current and maximum on there somewhere. I don't see it on the character. Oh, just, okay, where it says Sanity, just change that. Okay. Like just and, um, reduce it to 69, or you're starting in current, or... Yeah, just reduce it to... Cell, just or? reduce it. And Dennis, I have a question. I failed the roll. Is that one uh, Sanity point or D4? One, in this, for you. Oh. Okay, cool. It, it's not a huge thing, it's just a, that's not right. <laughs> it is definitely not right. We need to track the roll of the fit, missed rolls against sanity for the post-session XP or standard? No, sanity is different. Okay. And then, does that come up with incidents of sanity loss without going insane? Would this fall under violence or helplessness? This actually falls under unnatural, which you never get used to. Okay. It's asking because it was not popping up on. Know where to put that sandy loss. Yeah, just reduce your current sanity. Yeah, you just lost okay. once uh, the sanity, and there's no there's no further tracking of anything to be done at this point. Yeah, things only become important. Sand laws without going to ins without going insane. So there is no slot for unnatural on that. Right, you, unnatural you, you can't get you used to. That is okay. Those are how you track whether you get adapted. Oh, okay. gotcha. All right, guys, that was cool. Yeah, we're in. We're a few minutes over, so I'm going to go ahead and close this out for today. I think this is a good point to close out on because you now have um, this is fine it's going a little slower than I expected but um, I got to get all of y'all credit y'all are doing much more role-playing and discussion among yourselves and discussing things than a lot of groups I play with and so while it slows the game down some it actually makes the game more fun so mm -hmm. just kudos to all of you this is not a problem I, I do love all of the back and forth. I do think that we are maybe getting a bit carried away with our theories on what it could be <laughs> rather than actually actioning what we have in front of us, you know? Uh, yeah, that is true. I mean, we, I would totally agree. We, obviously, um, we should first solve this thing. What, what uh, Greg was like uh, arguing for is to cast like a wider net without losing, you know, the, the yeah, well, to be when, laser focused on Ashland. When I say about like the focus on the thing is not is is the role playing, but also the kind of you know we will find more plot as we go through the mm. core of it, right? And these yeah. other things might become more significant. You know, I'm just like, let's leave the hotel room, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> anyway, I've so. Seen that as well. Okay, anyway, I'm going to um, go ahead and stop the recording now, and so anybody who is watching, I will talk to you next week.